All right, I've got a discount for you. We're talking Xbox Live. Loads of gaming discounts. All you have to do is go to my description, copy my code from the description, paste my code. Woof, it's gaming time. Oh yes, AMD baby have just kicked everyone in the plums and released their new GPUs and new CPUs. Will they go in the next MacBook Pros? I mean the MacBook Pros that are coming out this year, the 2020 MacBook Pro 16, 2020. MacBook Pro 13 or 14, will these CPUs go on it? And GPUs, of course. Let's see if that makes any sense. Righto, tell you their champs. Now 2020 is going to be awesome for Macs. Some new stuff on the way. And have we just seen here from AMD, from CES 2020, what might be powering them? First, let's talk about the CPUs before I get into the GPU and the MacBook Pro 16. Now, before the MacBook Pro 16 come out, I made a video saying this is the MacBook Pro 16. And a lot of people commented, oh, this is just clickbait, blah, blah, blah. Then the MacBook Pro 16 come out, which I pretty much picked spec for spec, everything right. And then the comments changed on that video. I don't know why people were looking at that video after the MacBook Pro 16 had been launched or an Announced. But yeah, people are saying, how did you guess? And there's no magic to it. You just got to know the roadmaps of the CPUs. I mean, we know Tiger Lake's coming out this year. We know 10th generation Comet Lake, you know, 45 watt Intel CPUs are coming out this year. And we now know what AMD has to offer. Now, when it comes to CPUs, and we're talking about MacBook Pro 13 or MacBook Pro 14, whatever it is that comes out, let's have a look. Do these CPUs here from AMD make sense to put in those MacBook Pro 13, 14? And in terms of power, there's no issue there. We're talking 15 watts. Now the current MacBook Pro 13 use 28 watt parts. So if anything, this definitely will be the CPU they use. The AMD Ryzen 7 4800U. That's if they go to AMD. Not saying 100% are. But what I'll say is, why didn't they update the MacBook Pro 13 before Christmas? I mean, we already had new CPUs. We had 10th generation CPUs from Intel. We had the Comet Lake CPUs and the Ice Lake CPUs, both which could have went in the MacBook Pro 13s. Now you might say, well, they use 28 watt part. Well, as far as I know, there's no 10th generation 28 watt parts. But from what I understand is the 10th generation Comet Lake and Ice Lake CPUs are going to be sort of replacing them because they can crank up the TDP on those up to 28 watts or whatever it is. So they can actually fill the void of the 28 watt CPUs that go in the current MacBook Pro 13s. It would have made sense just to update the MacBook Pro 13 with the Ice Lake or Comet Lake CPUs. Just crank up the TDP. They didn't do that. So why? Is there a new 14 inch that's not ready? Or will there actually be a 28 watt specific 10th generation CPU coming out? Are they waiting for that? Well, the answer is we don't know. We're just speculating really. But it could be because they're waiting for this CPU. It would be amazing if the MacBook Pro 13 or 14 had this CPU. I mean, we're talking 15 watts configurable up to 25 watts as you can see there these things are amazing eight cores 16 threads we're talking like the power of 45 watt cpus of a few years ago like even beating some of the six core 45 watt cpus of just you know only a year ago fast memory support supports lpddr4 that's what apple want they want that awesome graphics in these okay you got better than Ice Lake Iris Plus graphics. So serious graphics in these. You can game with them. Not that you'll be gaming on a Mac, but you can imagine using Metal with the GPU on this. A MacBook Pro with this CPU in it and the graphical power of this would be absolutely amazing. But something tells me that they're not going to be doing this. They're not going to be putting these CPUs in there. I'd like to be wrong on this, but maybe it's not time to switch to Ryzen because you've got to remember the Macs use Thunderbolt 3. And there's no reason they can't put Thunderbolt 3 in these CPUs, or should I say in these laptops. Even they could use USB 4, which is basically Thunderbolt 3 anyway. That could be a thing, but until I see a Ryzen or an AMD system that has Thunderbolt 3 or USB 4.0, I'm not going to be holding my breath. It's not a thing at the moment, right? And until it is a thing, it's not a thing. So I want to see it. I would love these to be in the new MacBook Pro 13, 14. It would be amazing. You know, the only thing here is the battery life. Can they get the instant resume? Can they get the battery life? It'll work with metal, no problem. Work with Mac really well. It has a lot of things going for it. Also, there's a possibility with this CPU here, the AMD Ryzen 7 4800H, 
that this could go on a 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now don't know again, you have the Thunderbolt situation as I've mentioned, this is 8 core 16 thread, we're going back in the clock speeds because you can do 5 gigahertz with the 9980H, the i9 on the MacBook Pro 16, I've seen it do 4.9, you know, this is a little bit short there with 4.2, maybe sustain clock, it might be around the same, it does have Radeon graphics as well, it won't have quick sync, but again, remember AMD, you can probably use metal with the gpu the t2 chip and and possibly the graphics with this cpu i think this is less likely i think they're going to stick with intel here i still think intel are in front here when it goes to the other cpu the 15 watt one with eight cores 16 thread uh, but that's a bit different they look like they're faster than the intel offerings here it still looks like intel are the king of the 45 watt there but now let's have a look at the graphics and will the macbook pro 16 get some new graphics will it get a 5600m and a 5700m of course it'll be called a radeon pro and it will be a custom version of these if it did go into the latest macbook pro 16 is it possible that they could go in there let's have a closer look now currently we have this gpu in the macbook pro 16 it is a custom version it's not the rx 5500 and what's custom about it is it's 50 watt tdp the other ones can go up to 80 watts and it has 24 compute units here so we've got 24 compute units and 50 watt tdp so that's where it differs from say for example the rx 5500 here which has 22 compute units versus 24 with the radeon pro and also this can go up to you know 80 watts or 85 or whatever watts tdp also you can get eight gigabytes of ram with the radeon pro on the macbook pro whereas these are limited to four gigabytes with the pcs so if we just look on the surface here we look at the 5700 and the 5600m it's safe to assume that they're going to use more power so they'll probably use more than 85 watts the performance is probably going to be approaching a 2060 certainly faster than 1660 maybe faster than 1660 ti maybe in between that and a 2060 we'll wait and see when it comes to this but first things first the 5700 256 bit memory interface and a 192 bit with the 5600 so much better memory bandwidth you have 36 compute units that's versus 24 on the Radeon Pro 5500 on the MacBook Pro 16. We know, or I know from my testing, 50 watts is the limit with the GPU on the MacBook Pro 16. So you're not going to get any more than 50 watts. These things are going to be in excess of 85 or whatever when we're talking on a PC. But you will have custom silicon with Apple. They usually will get the better bin parts. So you're going to get better performance per watt. And it could just be that these will be offered as an option, just like the Vega GPUs were offered as an option with the MacBook Pro 15, right? You could get the 555, you could get the RX 560, or you could get the Vega 16 or the Vega 20, right? But they were both options. These graphics cards here will probably be an option if they make it into the MacBook Pro 16. Now to have 36 compute units and also a wider memory interface probably generates more power, more heat. How do you control that? Of course, it's controlled by clocks, right? So if we limit it to 50 watts, what will happen is this current 5,500, you know, it goes 1,000, 1,200, 1,250. Well, maybe you drop a few hundred megahertz, two, 300 megahertz, and then it may fit in the 50 watt TDP. It's gonna be much better because you've got the faster memory, right? 256, 192 versus 128 bit. Also, of course, you're gonna have at least eight gigabytes of RAM there. If the 5500 currently has eight gigabyte option, of course, these will have eight gigabyte option. So you can imagine 36 compute units at a slower clock speed than, you know, 24 compute units on this at a faster clock speed should mean that these things as long as the tdp is configured ruled down and of course again these are going to be custom for the mac they will be radeon pro could mean that we get these in the macbook pro 16 as an option and that would be phenomenal you know lower clock speed than the 5500 but faster memory more compute units and it might even be more than 36. You can imagine you already get two CU units extra with the 5,500 on the MacBook Pro versus 5,500 on the PC. So you may get 38 or maybe even 40 compute units. So that's a possibility. I would love to see these GPUs in the MacBook Pro 16. 
I really hope they do come. It may only come when they update to the 10th generation CPUs, which will probably be the Intel ones, and we should get 10 core i9s and 8 core i7s with the 10th generation CPUs that go in the MacBook Pro 16 refresh, and hopefully the option of these graphics cards. So I can't wait to see what happens. I'm actually very interested to see how these go in PCs as well. Stay tuned for that. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.